Hi, right, good morning and welcome to this week's edition of Encompass Live. I am your host, Krista Porter, here at the Nebraska Library Commission. Uh, Encompass Live is the Library Commission's weekly webinar series where we cover a variety of topics that may be of interest to libraries. We broadcast the show live every Wednesday morning, but if you're unable to join us on Wednesdays, that's fine. We do record the show as we're doing today, and it will be posted to our um, website and our archives for you to watch later at your convenience. And I'll show you at the end of today's show where you can access all of those recordings. Both our live show and recordings are free and open to anyone to watch. So please do share with your friends, family, neighbors, colleagues, uh, anyone you think might be interested in any of the topics we have on the show. Uh, for those of you not from Nebraska, the Nebraska Library Commission is the state agency for libraries. So in your state, that may be the state library. And so we provide services to all types of libraries in the state. So you will find um, shows on Encompass Live for all types of libraries. Uh, public, academic, K-12, uh, corrections, museums, archives, um, all sorts of things. Really, our only criteria is that are something to do with libraries. We have book reviews, interviews, mini training sessions, demos of services and products, all sorts of things. Uh, we sometimes um, have Nebraska Library Commission staff that do uh, presentations for us about services and programs and things we're doing here uh, through the commission. But we also bring in guest speakers. Um, and we, that's what we have with us this morning. Actually, a guest speaker from another state agency in Nebraska. So, uh, you know, kind of a part of us. We're, we're part of the same group. <laughs> and today we're going to be talking about this great program being um, just recently started up for um, Nebraska seniors. Um, uh, uh, and seniors, we're talking about, this is from the uh, uh, State Unit on Aging in the Nebraska Department of Health and Human Services. So, seniors, we're talking about over 60, <laughs> not high school seniors. <laughs> That's a whole different program. <laughs> Um, and Cynthia is here, and she's going to tell us all about this great program we have. So I'll just hand over to you, Cynthia, to introduce yourself um, more fully and tell us about what you um, all have to offer from uh, uh, the uh, State Unit on Aging. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Can you hear me? Yep, yep, sounds good. Okay. Um, I'm Cynthia Braumeyer. I'm the administrator for the State Unit on Aging in Nebraska. Um, we are a really small unit within the Division of Medicaid and Long-Term Care. Uh, our funding is through the Administration for Community Living at the federal level, Administration on Aging. We also reset, uh, receive two sets of funds from the Nebraska Legislature for Aging Services, and it, those all support the aging programs across the state. We fund area agencies on aging and they in turn fund senior centers and all the programs at the local level. Um, AAAs, we, we refer th to them as AAAs, not the driving people, the area agencies on aging. Um, and they offer an array of some portion of 50 services at the local level. Um, the running joke, when you're at a conference is you've seen one AAA, you've seen one AAA. So everybody is a little bit different, but then there's a lot of similarities. Um, all of the AAAs offer meal programs, congregate and home delivered, and um, those can you know, include Meals on Wheels programs or other agreements. Um, all the AAAs offer care or case management, um, information referral, caregiver programs, in-home services, and support uh, senior centers. And beyond that, it's kind of a mix um, of services and programs for the AAAs and their boards that they see are needed most in the community. And today I'm gonna talk about um, some stuff that we do, a new program that we have just uh, signed a contract for with Get Set Up, which is an online learning platform. Um, give you a little bit of information about the AAAs. Uh, show you some publications that we provide online that can be downloaded and filled out for um, seniors like powers of attorney and living wills, that sort of thing. A little bit of information on the long-term care ombudsman program, legal services where we interact with legal aid and give you a little bit of information on World Elder Abuse Awareness Day. So the reason that we got invited uh, to do this was the um, partnership with Get Set Up, and we saw a real need for more digital literacy for older Nebraskans before the pandemic and certainly during the pandemic. 
social isolation um, was, you know, is a big problem. And we had some funds to try out an online learning platform. And we are dipping our toe in that water, so to speak. Uh, Get Set Up is an online learning platform for older adults to learn in a small interactive class setting um, about their device and get comfortable with online activities. And then there are thousands of classes being offered. Um, more than 50 a week are being offered in multiple countries and multiple languages. Wow. Um, and our theory was that once you learned how to use your device and you could join a Zoom meeting and you got that comfort level, you can use any learning platform. Um, it doesn't have to be Zoom and it doesn't have to be this particular one. The classes for Ollie in Nebraska all went online during the pandemic. They are now a mix, but this gives uh, a level of comfort. Um, Something and that last few years with everyone being going to Zoom or online type interactions for all sorts of things in their lives. Yes, so yes, exactly. Medical, telehealth, yes. and everyone and has become a lot more comfortable with that. Um, many people. Yes, um, and and that kind of interaction now. So jumping into these things, like this kind of learning would be so much like a no-brainer for some people. So easy. Yeah. yeah. Um, so this was one way that you could learn how to use your device and participate in telehealth for medical providers um, and something that, you know, rural Nebraskans really can use. Uh, it'll avoid the trip to a larger city if it's not necessary. And right now that's going to save some gas uh, money as well as time. And the capability uh, is there. So the platform is get set up. And I'm going to show you some screens, but I, I'm going to come back to this so that I can open it up live. Um, we have a contract uh, for 20,000 online classes uh, for a year, and this will run from March to March. And so far, about 4,000 classes have been used, so we can tell that the interest is there. The classes are being taught by people age 50 and over for adults age 50 and over. Uh, the classes are not exclusively about aging, but they focus on those aspects that are age related. So within the interest and in funding from the legislature, uh, broadband is being made more available in rural Nebraska. And it seemed like a really good time to and a good fit for us to try this type of education. Um, with an increase in online literacy, uh, we can fight fraud, we can fight other forms of elder abuse and connect people, and that we hope with librarians across the state of Nebraska, we can make this available to more adults. And maybe it will help alleviate some of the technological questions that you get at the local level. Yeah. Um, and, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. There's health and wellness classes and, and other cooking classes and I'll show you a little bit about what the what people have been taking across the state which is kind of fun. So uh, during COVID like I said we had a lot of social isolation and um, communication really decreased and there was a real need for digital access to know how to use your um, devices and the classes are available right now um, and they do they will run until March of next year or until we run out of money. So we will um, see if we need to write an RFP or if somebody else wants to take take up the cause and fund that. It wasn't very expensive. We spent $50,000 to try this out and we think that it's already money well spent. Um, the teachers are from all over the world. Right now, there are about 4 million adults taking classes in 160 countries. And people who want to learn more will need um, an internet device and a phone number. And they'll be asked to set up a password, but once you've logged in from a device, it will just remember you. You'll see that it'll say, welcome back, Cynthia, when we log in. Uh, class times will follow you from your um, time zone. So I'm in central time zone today and I log in and it's going to show central time. If I go to Arizona for a couple of months and log in, it's going to know what time zone I'm in in Arizona. Um, the, all of the classes have closed captioning available 
and all of the classes have a technical person available in case something goes wonky for them. And they are the live classes are taught by a, a person and they have limited um, seating, so to speak, so that people can interact. And the classes, like the ones that help you learn how to use your phone, for instance, will have a very small class size so that you have an opportunity to interact one-on-one -on -one with those instructors. The first two classes that they recommend are orientation related, getting comfortable with your device, learning how to use Zoom and learning how to sign up for classes. And again, those are the kinds of skills that people would need regardless of what platform they're using. Those kind of skills are transferable. Um, and I'm gonna use my mother-in-law as a great example. She's 83. During the pandemic, she was not a big fan of Zoom but she and her friends had been playing bridge every week. And so one of them found an international online bridge game that you could drop in if you had your four people. And they played bridge um, virtually and had a good time. And then you have a little chat feature on the side. So they enjoyed that um, as much as they could, which I thought was really fun. Um, and her church went Zoom, you know, for, I don't know, a year and a half. Um, and they have now made Zoom uh, and I think, you know, most churches have done this. They've made their online presence a permanent fixture. So you can either go in person, which my mother-in-law is very happy to go in person now, but there's a whole bunch of people that can log in from anywhere in the world and um, participate. Well, mm -hmm. listen anyway. I think it's really become an accessibility issue for many people. Um, it has. And it has made a huge difference to um, uh, people who are homebound, whether it's for aging or physical reasons or whatever, they can participate in so many more things out in the world now. Yes. Um, that because of it being virtual, um, and the public libraries, we hear about, you know, the story times went virtual. And there are families who, like, I love my child to be able to attend story time, but I don't have the time to drive them to the library, have them do the 20 minute story time, drive them home. I mean, that, that could be a large chunk of my time, but I can sit them in front of the, you know, at the computer, right there at home for the 20 minutes and they get to interact and have a great time and they learn and um, many libraries also are keeping the virtual options as well so many more people can attend things attend conferences attend national conferences now that maybe you could never travel to yes um, for so many reasons um and I, it's just i think it's just amazing and hopefully this will be one of the um Silver lining to think about positive things that is maintained. Um, this, you know, people who are advocates for the disabled are really, really pushing for. You, you don't stop this. You have suddenly made the world open for to all of us, and can't take it away. <laughs> yeah, and you know, right when the pandemic hit, I was supposed to go to a conference in person, and they shifted. They went to total online. Um, and they did an amazing job. They had little breakout sessions, they had little social areas, um, you know, and conferences very often will, um, you know, have catering and everybody, you know, has lunch and you see the vendors and stuff. And they sent us Grubhub Q, uh, credits oh, and we got to, yeah, we got to order food from home. Okay, we're not doing that for this, but I mean, yeah. it was, they really did step up and and make it as in person as you could get during a pandemic it was fun um so when you do sign up it will probably do a two-step verification mine doesn't do it anymore because now i'm already you know logged in and and stuff but uh, it, it will want to make sure it knows who you are um so this is what the home screen looks like and uh I can, let me slide back to the page and it will take us there. So this is the Nebraska welcome screen and I've already signed up. So it says, welcome Cynthia. And this uh, setup message over here was our kickoff um, the end of March or in March. And um, it gives you a lot of options. There are uh, featured classes that are going on that you can okay, book. I'm and showing the screen of Oh, the shoot. Okay, screen. let me try it over here then. I thought it was gonna, right, sorry so about that. It's like it's opening up on your other monitor. It is, why is it doing that? I thought I got it to. There's a test on 
this and it didn't do it. Did it on the same one before? Yeah. Yeah, it I tested it. Okay, can you see it yeah. now? Yep. Perfect. That works. Yep, drag. Okay, I'll just drag mm -hmm. it over. Okay. Um, so this is the screen when you log in, and I haven't taken very many classes. I, you know, we're paying for them now. When they gave me free access to play with it, it was fun. Mm -hmm. Um so you can uh, host your own session once you learn something. It gives uh, pricing. So when they started this, they were doing online training for all ages. And when the pandemic hit, they saw a real need for seniors. And so they went exclusive uh, for seniors, f people 50 and over, and they just um, geared up their um, program. So I can show you the classes. It will give you about two weeks in advance of classes that are available, and they'll be um, in in date order what's coming up, like these are today. It'll show you where the instructor is. There are a number, the, they have a really big presence in India now, and a big presence in the United States, so you can see who's um, offering classes on what category. And over here on the right hand side, there are, um, you can talk about, you can filter for aging in place, um, cooking, exercise, food and nutrition, long term care. Um, so we could see what's going on with that, um, time management, different stuff that you could look at. You could schedule something for tomorrow. Um, and it'll send you a little reminder. Once you've signed up and taken classes, they'll send you emails um, almost every day that will um, say what you missed that might fit into your filter of stuff that you were interested in. So they have live classes and they also have um, classes that would be um, not interactive that would be appropriate for a large group and we've already had some senior centers participate in some of those. Uh, they um, like a travel one well and we had a lot of people participate in just the the uh, orientation too um, as large groups but there are travel just you know telling about um, traveling and showing pictures and stuff from different areas. All the classes are an hour long um, and there's live support. Uh, this phone number up here really does have live support for you to call somebody and say, oh, this didn't work for me, um, or, or get some information on that. Um, we're, we are pretty excited about that. I see down on the right, there's a little thing that says, hi, I need some help. Is that right? A right. Uh, I could, I could support? chat with somebody here if I needed to. So it'll show, um, all the classes that we might be interested in uh, moving forward. They also have a set of stories, and these are um, pre -re already recorded, but information from these hosts um, talking about different subjects, which is kind of cool. Um, I'm going to turn that off, and I'm going to pull back over here. There you go. Okay, uh, let's see. Okay. Um, okay, let me pull that over. So uh, that kind of gave you an overview of what it looks like for people when they sign up. Um, what we, when I spoke to the staff at the Library Commission, um, I understood that they get a lot of people coming from the community because they may not have internet or they may not have a device. Um, they may need help uh, logging in, setting passwords, resetting passwords. I think that this service may help with some of those questions, um, although they may still need to be um, in your facility to do it. Um, so. We've had a lot of um, press coverage already. We had a really nice article up here in Government Technology. Uh, we've had some TV coverage and some radio coverage. Um, I also did a quick interview um, our, in the city of Lincoln. There's a CityLink 
little TV thing that goes on YouTube, but it also goes on the local um, access channel. Did a little 15 minute piece on that that'll air next month. Um, right now, there are eight states participating in contracts very similar to what I just showed you. Uh, and I don't know all the eight states, but I know that Michigan, New York, and California have um, contracts that look a lot like this. Uh, right now, there are four languages, um, English, Spanish, Mandarin, and Hindi. Uh, they have 160 countries uh, participating with members. And right now, there's about four and a half million learners uh, internationally. Uh, enjoying this. And right now we have over 4,000 Nebraskans that have already taken some kind wow. of class. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we're pretty excited. So what we learned from our first report for the first eight weeks was uh, the top categories um, for Nebraska was um, communication and then the new skills and the technology, which I think all of those fall into the you better take this first so that you learn how to use it, but also food, nutrition, travel, wellness, uh, computers, again, which is a, a technology thing, and long-term care. And on the national, uh, national front, uh, food and nutrition, mental health, wellness, travel, technology, also, you know, just a, a lot of the same stuff in different, different order. Mm -hmm. um, and then the top classes uh, were our orientation piece and um, cooking and um, money management and uh, preparing for the dying process as a caregiver, which is something that you know would be very personal. You might not go to a class at the community center to, to learn about that. You might wanna do that at home. Um, and more computer, computer skills. Um, it's interesting that, you know, we're all thinking this is about digital literacy for the seniors and like you said that they need more help about how to use their device and it's kind of lowered down. It's not right up there at the top of um, the classes that they were. <laughs> yep. Well, and once you get over that, that hump, either that anxiety hump or whatever, um, then, you know, the world is at your beck and call. Uh, so for Nebraska, uh, and this isn't a big surprise probably for anybody from our state, but um, the top cities were Omaha, Lincoln, Grand Island, Kearney, and Bellevue. And all of those cities are along Interstate 80. Um, little disappointed that it get, didn't get any further west than Kearney, but I'm hoping that with this um, interview, we'll get, get a little further west. Uh, and three quarters of the people that are taking the class are women. And three quarters of the devices being used are Android devices. So I thought that was interesting. Great. I thought that was very interesting. That's, that's, yeah, that's, and that's something when you look at these statistics, you know, you hear Apple iPhone is the, I would say the one that yells the loudest that are the more, the most done in the, you know, advertising and everyone's all, yeah. But in actual usage, it's not exactly. Well, it. in this instance, it was more Androids, which is interesting because classes are way better with a, a laptop or a computer and a camera. Mm -hmm. Yeah. You know, because you can yeah. see the person, yeah. you can see yeah. the images. All of that, dude. yeah. 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 Well, and an Android could be at some kind of tablet. I mean, it doesn't have to be a phone, but. Um, Anyway, I don't know if there are, I have a lot of other stuff that I can show you. Mm -hmm. um, are there any questions that people have at this point? Are there any things that make people go, huh? Um, <laughs> you know, if there are things that I can't answer, I'm certainly happy to go back and research and see if there are other resources that may help our Nebraska librarians. Yeah, definitely. Um, yeah, let's see if anyone does say nobody had typed anything while you were uh, talking, but that's okay. Um, okay. Does anybody have any questions or uh, thoughts or comments about this? I, um, you know, go ahead and type in the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Um, anything more you wanted to see on the site? Any questions about how the process works, uh, what's available, um, or about what, uh, um, you know, what you can you know, access there. Um, you had mentioned, Cynthia, about how libraries um, discovering that having a lot of people coming in needing help with devices and internet access, um, having good enough internet access better at the library than at their home, definitely a thing. Um, but also, um, 
people do have their own devices, but some libraries lend out uh, tablets, yes, laptops, and hotspots, so that people have some sort of you know don't even have a device. So this definitely would go along with that. Yep. Um, someone coming in saying, I don't, I need to get on to do something. Um, and then you, know, by the way, you also have these resources um, right. that you can use on that you device. Could, you could help them get on, mm -hmm. and then get them signed up for the class that shows them how to use that kind of device. Exactly. Yeah. You know, that would take a little bit of, a uh, little bit of upfront, but probably free up quite a bit of time for the librarians. Mm -hmm. And so, so the question we do have is, what? Yeah, I guess what? Um, what exactly are you wanting libraries to do for um, about this? Um, Just well, share. Okay. Yeah, share the information. Um, I do have a little flyer that I will send you. I meant to send okay. that earlier. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, I'll write that down. We have a little flyer that um, agencies are printing uh, locally and just putting up, and it'll just kind of give some information. And the URL was on that um, slide, and my my slide deck mm -hmm. is available. Yes, and I'll mention that too, since you said that, yeah, um, after when the recording is ready is available, we will have these slides for you as well. So you have all the information and the links to everything um, will be available with the. Uh, okay, the cool. Page. Well, we have a number, like I said in the beginning, we have a number of online resources um, available to the general public. Um, and I, one of the things that's different about what we do in the um, state unit on aging and the funding from the feds um, from the Older Americans Act is our programs are not means tested. Uh, the priority is for the lowest income, social isolation, you know, frail, rural, but we don't go verify your income or anything when somebody needs services. The, the primary cutoff is are you age 60 or over? Um, or are you the caregiver of someone 60 and over? And then the rest of the services are uh, available. It's limited, you know, it's it's limited funding, it's grant funding. So when it's spent, it's spent. Uh, it's it's not like the other public uh, public benefits that are a match from the feds. And as long as you have spending authority locally, you can keep spending money. No deep pockets on this one, but um, really um, quite the bang for your federal and state buck. I'll put it that way. Uh, one of the things that we <laughs> one of the things that we um, fund is the area agencies on aging and the aging and disability resource centers. And the the aging and disability resource centers is programs on and referral services larger than the AAAs. So disability partners uh, participate in that and it gets um, information referral, um, benefits assistance, and you know a deeper amount of counseling for people to find public and private funding and services uh, locally. Um, we have moved our AD, and that's called the ADRC. We have moved our ADRC online provider portal uh, to the 211 um, program in Nebraska and Western Iowa. The Nebraska legislature funded the Public Service Commission a couple of years ago to expand 211 service statewide and 24 by 7. Um, availability. And so that is now available. And um, that was when I started this job eight years ago, that was my ultimate desire was to be married up with 211 because it, I think that having one source for all the information is better than having 50 sources for a little bit of information. So we are there now. Um, and our database was merged in in 21 and went live. Uh, we shifted over from the platform we were on in December of 21, and it has been it has gone pretty well. Um, we in our eight in our ADRC project, we have um, four partner organizations in Nebraska: um, Easter Seals, uh, UNMC's Monroe Meyer Institute, the League of Human Dignity, and Brain Injury Alliance. 
One of the things that we publish on the um, on our public website is a senior center list, and it gives um, where the seniors are, uh, where the senior centers are, and um, what city, what service area it is, the phone number, their address, what hours they're open. Um, do they do congregate meals, home delivered meals, um, and then any other services that they're providing. And we have this available in an Excel uh, table so that people could just sort um, the area that they need um, or in a PDF if they don't have access to um, use Excel. And we publish this pretty often. At the height of the pandemic, this was on the front page of the DHHS um, website because senior centers um, were a focal point and they were closing, uh, most of them were closed. And it was real important that people be able to figure out who was open and who was closed and what we were doing about um, meal delivery. So it was very important to get that out. Absolutely, yeah. Yeah. So, uh, something that we do is publish a lot of documents, like I said, that provide um, fillable PDFs or print it on paper and fill it out yourself for things that will help people um, avoid um, financial issues or set up um, advanced directives for end of life planning or a power of attorney, a um, number of things. And on our website, okay, so if I pick it up from here, it should open up on this page, hopefully. Oh, no, it didn't, so I'll have to move it over. <laughs> okay, so these are, this is our resources page. And down here, it will show helpful guides, brochures, and forms. We have an advanced directives, um, printable PDF and it will, let me make this, can I make this smaller? Maybe not. Um, it'll give basic information about advanced directives for people, question and answer. And the process. I'm going to close that. And I'm going to close that, close that, close that, eh, pull that over. Okay. We'll just keep going back and forth. Ah, hold on. So one of the documents that we publish and then update on a regular basis is the benefit and resource guide. We look up the URLs to make sure the links still work. So that's most of what we end up <laughs> reviewing. And we just did that very recently. Um, we used to print this and distribute it, which was very naive and very expensive. Um, we ended up recycling stuff after URLs changed. Uh, so now we print it on request and then publish it online for people to use as they um, need. It's 52 pages, so we would really prefer not to do a ton of them, but it does make it available. Um, and it does include programs and services that are beyond what the area agencies on aging provide. Um, and if you look through it and you see, you think something is missing, send me a note because we'd be more than happy to, to add to this. Uh, the other, another program that we offer and all of the area agencies offer is um, caregiver support. And this is just two pieces of um, the brochure with their information about um, the caregiver services at the local level. Another program that we fund, but we do not um, supervise is the state long-term care ombudsman. And in Nebraska, there is a state ombudsman, which is an office under the legislature. And then the long-term care ombudsman is funded by the Older Americans Act and a little bit from the state. And they are a mix of state employees, local area agency on aging employees, and a whole host of volunteers. And they represent 
the residence rights for people who live in congregate settings. And when we say congregate, we mean nursing homes and um, assisted living. Mm -hmm. And the, they do a lot of mediation on behalf of the residents. And it's either between the resident and the facility or the resident and their family usually. Um, people seem to behave badly when money is involved. Um, the, yeah, the ombudsman program is really small and it does depend on those volunteers. Um, it's a really wonderful service and um, the feds have changed uh, the regulations on this and they now uh, require 30 hours of training every year. I think that was almost double from what it used to be. Um, the, tr the volunteers have to be certified before they can go visit people in facilities and um, it's, a, it's a really vital service and it's required. Uh, we are required to, as a state, provide this service in order to receive the rest of our funding. And the funding that we receive for this is pretty small. Um, so the, there are probably six full-time employees between the state and the um, agencies. And then there are probably 80 volunteers um, participating. In Omaha, the Eastern Nebraska Office on Aging rec has recruited, I think at this point, one volunteer for every facility, which is um, a tremendous undertaking and really yeah. um, pretty, pretty darn exciting. So if there are people that are looking for volunteer jobs um, that are super meaningful in their community, this is one that I would highly <laughs> recommend. Yeah. Um, we offer so one of the things that we fund, um, that we are required to fund from the feds, and we are happy to do so, are legal services. And every AAA offers legal services in some capacity. So some AAAs pay for attorneys to represent clients in cases who might not qualify for legal aid services, because legal aid is super low income threshold, and they do, it's a means tested um, service. The AAAs participate in a contract for the elder access line in Nebraska. So this phone number that's um, up here, the 527-7249, is a statewide number, and it, it is answered um, by legal aid attorneys, and it's paid for by the area agencies on aging through the funds that I talked about earlier. And people um, 60 and over can call and ask questions um, and get them answered. Um, and if they're you know, high priority and they qualify, they may get further assistance. Not every state has this kind of service with a toll-free number and available to everybody. And it's not a 24 by seven um, number. And I, sorry, I did not list the hours that they're open, but they're open five days a week. Um, and I think it's at least four or five hours a day that they take the that they take calls. Um, Advanced Directives is another publication that we um, make available to the public, and it has um, several pieces of information for clients, which I will open it. Let's see. Hold on. Let me open it up and show you what it looks like. And then slide it over to the other screen. So this is a fairly quick document. Um, oh, did I? No, this is the same one I showed earlier. Never mind. Okay. Um, surrogate decision making, uh, there are several documents that get used out of this um, booklet, and this gives a very thorough, um, without any fluff, uh, information about what people need to know if they are helping um, someone make decisions. And this is a, I don't know if you, everybody can see the table of contents. So they type, talk about the types of surrogate decision making and what the limitations, what a power of attorney can and can't do, 
um, information about advanced directives with living wills and stuff and what you can and can't do, information about guardian and conservatorship, um, and then other resources, and then how to use uh, forms for healthcare powers of attorney and Nebraska power of attorney healthcare form. A lot of information that really um, very useful, very useful. Uh, one of the things that gets used a lot out of that document is the Nebraska Living Will Decla Declaration. Mm -hmm. And this is just a copy of the top of the form that you would see in the book. Uh, but it can be pulled out of the book and filled out by hand. Um, it also looks like uh, at least the top of it has a fillable PDF mm -hmm. in the online version. And then the Nebraska Power of Attorney works very much the same way. And again, this is just a, a clip of the top of the form. So um, we do a lot of work, like I said, with legal aid. And they have two spots on their website that have um, forms. And I'll show you the power of attorney and the guardianship. Let me see. Okay, let me pull this up. I'll show you what the page looks like. I'm not going to log in, but you can see what the Mm -hmm. page looks like. So this, and this may be useful for lots of stuff, lots of librarians across the state, regardless of the age of the person coming in. So there's a child support handbook, um, custody, divorce information, paternity. The stuff that we were interested in was um, the power of attorney, um, housing code is in, in from, uh, helpful and the guardianship handbook. Those are the two that um, affect seniors more than not. Mm -hmm. um, and then, but all of these uh, are available for folks to look at. So they'll give you, you know, I mean, this one's 27 pages long. Um, and the guardianship handbook gives you information about guardianship Pull that over. <laughs> well, it's good to see that there's so okay. many different handbooks, so much through that legal aid there that I think um, can be useful, as you said, to libraries doing all sorts of things, not just things for their senior. Um, yeah, yeah. Um, there's there is just a ton of stuff available um, online. You know, it's it's tough to be able to find some of it sometimes. I mean, I've been in it, and I had been in it. And then I sent a note to Margaret at Legal Aid just to make sure that I was looking at the right stuff. I was like, is it sitting in one place all by itself? Um, so I was going to show you this page. Yeah, so if you get started. Number to um, refer people to these things, but do not give legal advice. <laughs> Correct. That's something that librarians do kind of know that with legal advice. Correct. Advice. I'm not a lawyer. I can't give you advice, but I can point you in the direction of these people. Exactly. Exactly. Kind of exactly. So this will require you to set up an account in order to access um, the documents, but it's like your name, an email address, a phone. It, it's not a it's not a big, yeah. um, not a big investment of your time. Um, and last but not least, uh, we are coming up on World Elder Abuse Awareness Day, which is June 15th, and it's recognized internationally. Um, there will be events taking place across the state and beyond. Um, you could take a look locally for your area agencies on aging and see what they may be offering. Um, in Lincoln, the aging partners, the uh, area Agency on Aging here in, in town has a lot of events um, scheduled and they'll do things with the senior centers. Um, in Lincoln at the state office building, we give away swag um, and brochures on fraud and usually cookies. Um, we, we partner with um, the Attorney General's Office Consumer uh, Affairs. We partner with the banking um, 
Commission uh, and uh, Adult Protective Services and Office of Public Guardian. Um, we partner with AARP and you know anybody that has swag, then we try to get them to give us stuff so that we can hand it out and entice people over to the table and talk to them about elder abuse awareness and hopefully um, avoid elder abuse for, for our folks. Um, and I guess, uh, are there any questions? Oh yes, and there's Cynthia's contact info for if you do have anything um, in the future that you wanna ask of her, if you don't um, get your questions answered today or think of something later, of course, that you're going through all these all these resources that are available from the, you know, an aging. <laughs> Um, anybody have any questions? Any questions, comments, anything else you want to um, see more about or learn more about? Uh, go ahead and type in the questions section of your GoToWebinar interface. Or um, if there's something you've done at your library that has worked with some of these resources you want to share, uh, how if you yeah. do some of these, um, definitely let us know. We'd love to, I'm sure, yeah, so we'd love to hear about how um, it's been used or how you might consider using it. Um, so this is great information, definitely. Um, and as you said in the beginning, we, um, we you know, connected with uh, Cynthia about talking about the, the new Get Set Up program, all these online, live online classes, um, which, were, which are a great resource. And um, hopefully you'll have a lot of people coming into your library to use them, um, either in the library. I know some libraries have, um, they throughout the pandemic, have figured out how to give people also um, privacy for doing like telehealth things. So they have like um, either meeting room or little pod rooms and places that um, can be used for people to use these um, resources if they can't do it at home. That's just something right there. Um, and as I said, we will have the slides available afterwards with um, the archive. So all of this and the URLs, the links that are mentioned down here, uh, you'll have access to all of that afterwards. So. Hopefully you didn't have to worry about uh, scribbling down all those URLs or anything. <laughs> it doesn't look like anybody has typed in any questions while I was uh, babbling away here. If that's okay. Um, might just not need to know more right now. Um, oh, we do have some. So, so all of this, so these resources, um, the, the get set up, that there's just to confirm. And what's confirmed, there's no cost for the seniors using it. That's all funded by the monies that you received. Correct. We okay. um, we bought a contract for twenty thousand um, classes, and it the contract runs from March twenty two to March twenty three, okay. um, unless we use them up uh, before March of twenty three. If we haven't used them up by March of twenty three, they'll just do a no cost extension and let us run out the rest of the contract. So we'll get everything that we paid for. Um, yeah, great. Yeah. So I think that's important too, to push that this isn't gonna cost anyone to attend these classes. is isn't like- Right. For a, a, at, right, right now- they, something. Yeah. <laughs> correct. And you know, their retail price I think is about, um, when they were doing, you know, single classes or single memberships, I guess it was about $15 a month for somebody um, to participate. Uh, and, you know, it just kind of depends on where you're at, what state you're in, if there's a program already available. Um, mm -hmm. Michigan, I think bought, uh, Michigan's big. I think they, they spent hundreds of thousands of dollars. Um, but, you know, we're, one of the things that we're looking at is if we need to, you know, I don't think that we need to be the mothership on this. This was an opportunity to see what's the interest, what kind of stuff, you know, did it make a difference? Um, how many people took classes? Where were they from? What kind of classes did they take? Um, that sort of thing. Mm -hmm. But there are lots of online opportunities and there may be uh, other platforms um, if we buy more, we will have to go out with a request for proposals and we still will have, you know, a limited budget. Mm -hmm. um, but 
we we may spur some interest and there may be somebody interested in um, sponsoring this kind of class, you know, later. Um, I'm open to that too. <laughs> All right, great. That looks like that was the one question that we did have about just to make sure about the cost of all of this. Yeah. Yep. Uh, it doesn't look like anybody has any other desperate questions they want to ask right now. That's great. That's not a problem. There is Cynthia's contact info, though, if you want to know more. Um, or just go and start exploring the page. Uh, we do have a link to the Get to That page from our session page for today. Um, and like I said, you have a link to all the other resources in the slides. I'm going to double check all of that before we get the um, recording up. So I think we, we could uh, wrap things up. Nobody has any questions. Um, any last words, Cynthia, before I uh, do my wrap up for the show? <laughs> no, I appreciate being invited and I hope that it turns out to be useful. Every Everything that we've got open to the public. Yeah, absolutely. Even if you're not, you know, so many things are just on the website there too. If you're not a Nebraska person, um, see what there that you might be able to use but um see what your state is doing you, know, you mentioned michigan and other states this is something that yep. could be going on in your area well, i know we do have lots of people who attend our show from all across the country or watch a recording later um so look and see i saw that scary programs like this out there see what your state's offering as well all right thank you so much i am going to pull presenter control back to my okay. screen so i can uh show you about all the archives and um wrap things up here. So thank you so much, Cynthia. This is great resource. So glad to have you get you on the show. So thank I'm you so much. I'm up to speed on this. So here's our session page for today's show. Um, this will be what we'll have um, for in our archive. So um, if you go to our main Encompass Live page, um, if you use your search engine of choice anywhere and type in Encompass Live, the name of the show, it's the only thing called that on the internet. Nobody else can use that. Anymore. Um, these are upcoming shows for the next few months, um, but right underneath there, there's a link to our archived Encompass Live shows, and here's that page. Um, this is last week's show, the most recent one at the top of the page. So today's will be here, uh, should be uploaded um, by the end of the day tomorrow. Usually it takes about a day or so to get everything processing through YouTube and go through webinar and everything. Um, everyone who attended today's show and registered for today's show, you'll get an email from me letting you know when it's ready. Um, what we also uh, push out onto our social media, we have um, a Facebook page for Encompass Live if you like to use Facebook. We do reminders, should a reminder to log in today's show, meet our presenter, um, recording of last week. So um, if you want to keep an eye on things, you can um, like our Facebook page or in places like Twitter and Instagram, I'm not sure where else are, we use the um, hashtag Encump Live, little abbreviation. Um, while we're here on the archive page, I'll show you there is a search feature here, so you can search for a particular topic or library or something that you might be interested in and see if we've done a show about it. You can search the full show archives or you can limit it just the most recent 12 months, not something very current. Uh, that is because this is our full show archives, and I'm not going to scroll all the way down because it's a very large page. <laughs> um, this is our full show archives going all the way back to January 2009 when um, Encompass Live first premiered. So uh, you just pay attention to the original broadcast date of anything. Everything has a date on here, so you know when it first happened. Um, some of our shows will stand the test of time, still be good, useful, accurate info, but some things will become old, outdated. Um, services and programs may have changed um, drastically. Uh, links may be broken. Some things might not exist anymore after over 10 years. Um, so just pay attention to when these things were originally broadcast. Um, but we are, as librarians, we do keep things for historical purposes oftentimes, for archival purposes, and as long as we have a place to host all of these, we will have these always up there for um, people to watch. Um, but you'll see we also mentioned talking, applying for a CE credit, continuing education credit. Um, if you're in a Nebraska library and you're attending today's show live, we automatically issue that. If you watch an archive show, we've got a form to apply to submit um, for that. Um, after today's show, about an hour after the show, everyone who attended will get an email confirmation, which proves that you attended today's show. If you need to show that to your, whoever does issue your CE or prove to your library administration that you attended. Um, if you're not from a Nebraska, um, not from Nebraska, you will need to go to your CE granting department, whoever does that, to have them give you um, CE credits for this, but you will have some proof 
of attending the live show today. <clears throat> All right, so um, that is um, wraps up for today's show. Thank you everybody for being here. Today, um, you see we've got our upcoming schedule, May, all June booked. Uh, you've got some July and August dates coming up, so um, that I've confirmed, so keep an eye as this gets filled up. Um, I hope you'll join us next week when it is the last Wednesday of the month, so that means it is Pretty Sweet Tech Day. Um, the last Wednesday, of month, last Wednesday of every month, Amanda Sweet, our technology innovation librarian, comes on the show to talk about something tech-related. Um, we sometimes have other shows about techie things too throughout the month, but you can guarantee that it'll always be the last Wednesday of the month. And um, next week, she's going to talk to us about the most recent computers and libraries con con um, conference. Um, it was, I think it was a hybrid conference, it's like we were talking about earlier, some in person and some um, virtual. And she said that she's going to talk about what she learned there at computers and libraries. So if you're interested in um, what people did at that conference, uh, sign up for that and for any of our other shows that we have coming up in the next few months. All right, didn't get any desperate, any other questions came in or anything while I was talking? Just want to double check that. So thank you everybody for being here with us today. Thank you, good to see you, Cynthia. Um, and um, hopefully we'll have a lot of libraries and a lot of people using those awesome resources that we have available now for them. All right, thank you everybody and see you another time on um, Encompass Live. Bye-bye.